In this tutorial, we're going to be covering what it's like to add shadows to 3D objects, and man, what a difference. Hey, this is Adam with Tech Dive AV Club. We're going to talk about casting shadows in Vegas effects. Now, this can get really complicated really fast, and it also involves kind of our first step in setting up a 3D environment. So, this is going to be a flyover uh, to give you the idea of where to get started and some of the components involved, but there's certainly a lot more you can learn in this segment. So, first off, we're going to get a clip to start with, and this is just a glass on a stool, and we're going to import the Oculus controller, which we've used used previously uh, into here. So the Oculus controller is just an imported 3D object and it's got a speculative map and a diffusive map. These are all covered in a uh, previous tutorial. So I've got my Oculus controller positioned and precariously balanced on the stools to kind of show you what a casting shadows can look like. And first off, there are no lights in the scene. That's why this Oculus just looks kind of bleh is because it's just a model and it's always your models are always going to look bad so first thing we're going to do is lock this bottom layer here because we just don't want it moving and then we're going to add a light and we go to right click underneath our tracks here and hit new layer we can hit a light layer and it's also going to create a camera so we hit ok to that and now we have a camera layer and a light layer now if we move the light you can see that it actually is interacting with this 3D object limitedly because there is not is not casting any shadows of any kind but it is creating kind of a glow that makes sense in 3D space so you can already see where this is going I'm gonna hit control Z there and then if we look at this camera too we can actually go to this view up here and go to perspective and see what's happening there, there is a camera that is casting a viewpoint uh, onto this 3D object and that camera can also be manipulated and moved in every which way you can imagine and that is more than we can do in this tutorial today but it is like a real camera with real focal lengths and real depth of field adjustments and things like that that you can use to match your camera uh, but this camera this shot's so simple uh, it's not something we need to get into today and I picked that on purpose but for our purpose purposes here this is working fine so now um, but that camera does have to exist and I'm going to lock it it does have to exist for you to be able to manipulate 3d objects together to to attack each other together not attack but to to um, you know interact in a 3d space so like the lights now behind it and slide it kind of in front of it lower against it uh, further away closer so many different options so that's all very cool and it certainly increases the realism but it still looks very fake mostly because there's just no interaction with the environment around it first off to get any kind of shadows we need to go to the new light here and go to the light itself and we need to click cast shadows on and uh, that still won't make any shadows but it does have to be selected and then next we're going to go to the oculus controller drop down here um, and it's, it's whatever your 3D model is. We're going to go to 3D model layer, go to the materials, scroll down, and we're going to hit uh, cast shadows. And so you can see, I want you to look right here and right here. If we click it on, now we have them both on, now there's a shadow behind it, so that increases the realism, like you can't just perfectly see every part of the object. It casts a shadow on itself here, and the thumbstick also casts a shadow. Very cool. Uh, and so now that we've got it casting shadows, that's awesome, and we can even position the light uh, even better. Um, but it's not casting a shadow onto a stool, and that's because the stool doesn't exist in 3D space. It's really just a backdrop for what we're doing. So we can make something like the stool exist in 3D space very easily. We can just right click, hit new layer, and hit plane. And we want this plane to be white, okay? So it'll probably be default black for you. We want a white plane, and hit all right. And this plane is now just covering everything up, and that's not what we want. We want to right-click it, and then we go to Dimensions and hit 3D Plane. Now, it's still covering everything up, uh, but we can put it underneath the camera and the Oculus controller and the light uh, and now start to see things. So uh, when we rotate this plane, now the plane, it turned black again. 
Now the plane had turned black again. I have went down to emissive here and I have picked a new color for it so that way we can see this white plane. What we want to do is just rotate this new 3D object. It's really just a piece of paper in space. Uh, the same way we rotate any kind of 3D object. And if you're having trouble with these controls, you can always just kind of get, deal with the sliders and the transform uh, by moving the rotation. You can see here, what I'm doing is just trying to put a piece of paper underneath it <laughs> that matches where the stool would exist in 3D space. So we can drop the opacity some too if we, if we want to kind of be able to see both at the same time. So we may have to move this some more as we go, but now I've worked with the position, orientation, rotation, and scale to uh, get myself a, I've not messed with the scale actually, but to get myself, like, you know, essentially put a piece of paper under this fake Oculus controller so we can actually make it fake act on the real world around it. So you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So I'm going to bring the opacity back up, and then I'm going to go to the materials. I'm going to move the emissive back down to black, we're going to have received shadows and cast shadows on and illuminated needs to be off because if illuminated is on it's also going to be getting uh, this drop light here um, but if it's off then now it will only be getting shadows but you can see when we put cast shadows on it actually puts a shadow over our oculus controller which means it's kind of sitting above it really and so you can look how we're kind of slicing it in 3d space and there's a shadow behind it now, we were actually too high up and it was too hard to see. Uh, so now we can move this sh piece of paper underneath it now that we can see the shadows and really get a good idea of where it is. So that shadow is much more like I want it to be. Let's make it bigger. Let's make this piece of paper bigger. So let's cast a shadow onto the whole stool here. Um, and there we go. So now we got a shadow, but also this awkward white thing. So how do we get rid of that? So with the plane, we just need to composite this. And if you remember from our compositing lessons, um, we can get rid of white entirely by right clicking, going to blend options and going to the multiply. Where'd it go? Adding a multiply mask. Now that gets rid of white entirely. And now we've got a shadow on the stool. So now we've got a 3D object casting a shadow. Very cool. Um, and you can see why this could be tricksy as you start messing with all sorts of different things as size and perspective and camera to get it more perfect for your scene. So what we could do if we needed uh, lots more time, we could actually create more planes uh, to or other import other 3D objects to mimic it. Uh, we could import a 3D object to mimic the glass and uh, cast shadows on it, or uh, import another plane like we did and create a fake little plane here where the shadow would cast on it. Uh, or we can just you know like position it in a way where it doesn't actually cast a shadow onto the glass itself. We can always go back to the light position here and maybe bring it up and choke it down just a little bit. There we go. So now look at that. Without sh with shadows, without. With without. Got to love it. So Thank you so much for watching. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more tutorials like this one as we get more into Vegas effects and start doing fancier things. I hope to get my sci-fi series up and going this summer. Uh, it takes a lot of prep to uh, get something that you want to have an ongoing product. So thanks for watching. Like if this video helped you out. Subscribe if you're looking for more. I'll see you guys next time.